Peace and love, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for our series here that we've been doing on the summer of love. And today we talk about the love of our community. I'm Tim Selby from here at Art of Steamboat, and uh, appreciate you joining me. I love Steamboat Springs. I bet a lot of you watching this love Steamboat Springs, too. And if you haven't been here, I bet you if you came here, you would love it, too. When we talk about love in Steamboat Springs, we might start with talking about how we love the, we love the mountains and the snow and the skiing. We might talk about how we love riding bikes or love sitting by the river, how we love walking through an aspen forest or the way that the moonlight reflects off of a mountain lake. So many things to love about all of that, and I love all that so much. But that's not the best part. The best part of Steamboat Springs is the people. The way people love each other, the way people connect with each other, the way people try and help and serve each other along the way. One little example for that in our lives was when our son Brennan was born. He was in the hospital for a few weeks shortly after his birth. And in that time, there were numerous times when we would come home and there would be dinner on the kitchen counter. Back in those days, we just left our doors unlocked. I don't know who brought the food or where it came from. It just over and over again showed up on the kitchen counter. That's the kind of way people take care of each other, the way people rally around one another to support each other when things might be difficult or hard. It's also the ways that people celebrate together and enjoy life and really embrace the friendships and the connections that we have in this community. Lift Up is one of our great community service organizations here in town. And about, you know, it was probably about 28 years ago or so now, a group of us from the different churches got together to have a meeting, talk about how we might serve the community. Because our friends down here, right behind me at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, they had this little thing out front called Epiphany House, where they had some clothes and things that might help people in the community. And here at our church, the back alley was, was dirt. It was a dirt alley. We had a two-car garage back there. And that garage was stuffed floor to ceiling with, can't really say it, but with stuff, all right? It was Unbelievable. And other churches have different variations and forms of this, all trying to sort of help our community, but all really inefficient ways of doing so. So we got together and said, what can we do? How, how can we come together to work together to serve the needs of our community? And from that and successive meetings, we ended up establishing Lift Up as a cooperative venture in the Judeo-Christian tradition to serve people in our community. And it's been such a beautiful thing, a wonderful thing. The food bank the thrift store, all that goes on there, all the ways that people get helped and get served and connected with, and all the volunteers that make that happen. My gosh, and Sue Fagelein, the director out there, is doing a great job. Paul Rolfus, the chair of the board, and everybody out there working to, to serve people's needs do such a great job. I could go on and on trying to list community service organizations that, that bless people in our community. I'm just going to name a few. My colleague Becky here, works with the Route County Crisis Support Group, working to support first responders and all that they deal with and the difficult work that they do and help people in the midst of tragic events that might happen in our community. Reps Reaching Everyone Preventing Suicide works hard to try and bring that suicide rate down. There's too much loss, too much pain, too much hardship, so kudos to them for, for working hard at that important work. Skate Church, out there trying to connect with kids in ways that other groups might not be able to do. Partners, connected mentors with kids. Horizons and True North, working with people with disabilities that have just great lives filled with health and, and wholeness and joy. So many great groups. I could go on and on. And I'm so thankful to be a part of that. You know, our community is not perfect. Far from it. We've got lots of struggles, lots of challenges, lots of difficulties. But I love being a part of the great work that's done by so many people in this community to try and help the needs of others. You know, there's a miracle story in the Gospels. There's a miracle story that's told in all four Gospels. And this miracle story 
is not only told in all four Gospels. It's actually told, some version of it is told six times in four Gospels. So this is a super important story in our Christian tradition. It's known as the feeding of the 5,000. But it was more than that. Because it says there, there were 5,000 that were fed, not including women and children. So a lot of those 5,000 men would have had spouses. A lot of those families, would have, there would be kids. So that 5,000 was really probably more like something like 15,000 people. And I would ask you, what is the population of Steamboat Springs, Colorado? It's, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 people. So we're talking about a miracle story where Jesus fed like our entire community. And how it happened is such a, such a beautiful story. Jesus goes up by himself on the mountains to get away. He's trying to get some quiet time because people are always wanting something from him. But the people, they find out where he's going and they follow him. They go with him and it, they, sh he's, they just show up. And it says when they show up, you know what Jesus does? He says he has compassion on them and he seeks to, to heal their illnesses and to, to touch them and to bless them. He's moved with compassion to be with these people who are following him everywhere that he goes. And then Jesus says to his disciples late in the day, what are we going to feed these people? <laughs> and the disciples were like, Jesus, have you lost your mind? How are we going to feed these people? We don't have anything to feed these people with. How in the world would we feed these people? But there's a little boy that overhears the conversation between Jesus and the disciples. And that little boy comes up with a, with a bag of food. And it's got... It's got two fish and five loaves of bread. And he says, I, I have this. We, we, we could share this. Now, I call this the parable of the unsupervised boy or the story of the unsupervised boy because there's no way this kid's parents were paying attention because if they were paying attention, this miracle would not happen because if his parents were watching this kid, they would have said, Billy, you do not, do not, Billy, do not take that to Jesus. Billy, do not. Billy, look. Look at all these people. Our little bag of food's not going to help anybody. It doesn't matter. And we need to eat. I'm hungry already. We need to eat, right? If you give it to them, you're not going to have any food, Billy. And it's not going to matter. It's just, you, Billy, don't take that up to Jesus. But they're not watching him. Because they would have told him that, you know what, those people, they forgot to bring their food. We, we're the ones that plan ahead, right? So it's their problem. They'll figure it out. Just let them, let them be. But Billy is so beautiful. Billy is like, he's so naive that he thinks that if he shares the food that he has, that it will make a difference somehow. Oh, what a naive kid, right? But Jesus picks up on what Billy does. The disciples, I'm sure they laughed at him, scoffed at him, tried to push him out of the way. But Jesus picks up on what he does. And if you've been watching this, this space lately, we talked not long ago about faith and certainty and about how faith is living without knowing all the answers. And in this sense, it's, faith is kind of the living as the people that can say, you know what, I'm going to share my food. I can see all those people, and I know it won't make a difference. But I'm going to share it anyway. Because that's what we do. Because that's how we live. And who knows what might happen if you live that way. You know, Maggie and some of the uh, youth from our high school group and some leaders are in uh, Kentucky right now working with Appalachian Service Project. They went there to do some work, and guess what? They're not construction workers. They don't know how to work. They're not skilled. But they're going to go there, and they're going to work. They're going to put in an effort and energy, and they're going to do some things that matter, and they're going to make some connections, and they're going to learn some things. They're going to have their eyes open to some things, and who knows what the fruit of that experience will be. But it'll be something beautiful because they stepped out to do it. I have a little formula I want to put on the screen here. This is my formula for miracles, and here's what it looks like, and I'll explain it to you. C plus S plus W equals miracles parentheses, P, all right? <laughs> Here's what those things mean. We have the, in this story, we have the power of Christ. That's the C, the power of Christ. 
plus we have the willingness to share that comes in this story from the little boy plus we have people who are willing to do the work because in this story jesus says to the disciples take this and pass it among them somebody to go out and do the work of making it happen and you put that together the power of christ the willingness to share people to do the work and you get miracles p and the p is possible you get the possibility of miraculous things happening miraculous things don't happen all the time but you get the possibility of miraculous things ha things happening when you see this equation you know if you're like me sometimes our world feels very overwhelming the problems the struggles the difficulties feel so overwhelming you got climate change you got poverty you got hunger you got war you got strife you got politics you got so many difficulties in the world and it all seems so heavy and so overwhelming but here's what i want you to think about today in the midst of all that feels overwhelming in our world i think that you and i metaphorically we have a bag with maybe a couple fish and a few loaves of bread we have the simple things that we have and if we're willing if we're willing to share what we have if it's blessed by the power of christ and we have some people to do the work to make it happen we can do beautiful and amazing things together this this little box the blessing box this is just one of our ways here at the church uh, of sharing uh, a couple of fish and a loaf of bread inside this box there's food and toiletries this box is right here on the street anybody can come up anytime if they need some food if they need something to help them along the way this is just one little one little bag one little fish one little loaf of bread that we hear the church do I appreciate the people who've done it and gg walker making this beautiful painting that uh that colors it up here so i would say this i love the steamboat springs community i love all you people that make it happen and all those who work together to bring life to those people here in our community let's keep working you know what if we do it who knows we just might make miracles happen right here in steamboat springs peace out